Bien, nous nous rendons grâce à Dieu. Thank you so very much. I, I, I'm ten, tempted to continue in French, Pastor Tano Salomon. I think from Kenya, he's with us. We thank God. A lot of people from ECD, SID, from the world, from the US, feel welcome and at home as you join us in this webinar. It's a joint venture of department communic the communication department and the youth ministries department. And right now we are going to listen to Pastor Alfred Kwasiesiem, the WAD Youth Ministries Director, who is going to introduce to us the main facilitator of today. By the way, we have posted the background, the video background of this meeting. If you can use it, just go to the chat box. It was posted there. You just download and then use it as your backdrop. And that would be, you look very nice from behind. As we, as you can see on our screens. So, Pastor Esiem, you have the floor, sir. All right, all right. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Makari. A very good evening to all of us. Indeed, it is a singular honor to introduce our sole guest speaker for this wonderful uh, seminar. Our guest is. Pastor Kojo Chumasi. Pastor Kojo Chumasi was born in Michigan and raised in New York City. He holds a BA in theology from Oakwood University and a Master of Divinity from Andrews University. Currently, he serves as the pastor of Toledo First and Northwood SDA Church in Ohio. He is also the president and chair of Mission Driven Purpose, which is a non-profit humanitarian organization. He also serves as the president of Kojo Chumasi Ministries. Through his dedicated service, Pastor Kojo and his team have baptized over 3,000 souls. This year alone, he has baptized nearly 200 souls in America uh, churches. I happened to visit one of his campaign in the US and it was, it was wonderful. Additionally, the Lord has used Pastor Kojo Chumasi to plant 12 churches in Africa, building church buildings, construct water wells, facilitate mass distribution of goods to various African communities. He's also produced online courses and trained hundreds of church members in evangelism principles. On a personal note, Pastor Kojo enjoys reading, exercising, spending time with friends and listening to music and engaging in fun adventures. He's also married to his beautiful and god honoring wife, Elizabeth Chumasi. Pastor Chumasi is well vested in the subject matter which we are going to discuss. Allow me to uh, welcome Pastor Kojo Chumasi to this special event. Pastor, you are welcome. The leaders of the West Central Africa Division, our union leaders, our youth directors, and numerous of our members are ready to listen to you. You have the floor. God bless you as you lead us. Well, thank you ever so kind, kindly, uh, Dr. Alfred Asiem, for this opportunity to come to this prestigious gathering today in order to talk about a passion of mine, in order to talk about my life's work, in order to talk about the privilege that all of us get to do every single day. And that privilege is to tell someone about Jesus and invite them to follow him and to use digital tools in order to do so. So doctor, my dear director, I thank you so much for this invitation and for all those stakeholders, constituencies and decision makers, thank you for inviting me here today in order to talk to the entire West Central African division. And I acknowledge that there are others who are outside of that division that are here as well. I'd like to say we welcome you and I'd like to say thank you for being here as well. Today is going to be a powerful moment in time. You're going to be instructed. You're catching 
and you're also going to be inspired. And so, as I usually say here in the States, strap your seatbelts on because we're getting ready for an incredible ride. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Once I do so, I'm going to kindly ask if um, Dr. Siam could uh, confirm if my screen can be seen. And then yeah. from there, once that is confirmed, I'll go ahead and yes. play it so that we can yes. all see. It, it, it can be seen. It can be seen. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. All right. And can it still be seen? Yes. All right. Excellent. All right. Well, with that being said, permit me at this juncture uh, to be able to pray. And once I do so, we will get into our presentation. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be called sons and daughters of God. And today, as we move forward in learning about how to evangelize using digital tools, I pray that you bless us. In Christ's name, amen. This presentation today is called Digital Evangelism, How to Turn Clicks into Crowds. I wanna be very clear with the objective of my presentation. The objective of my presentation is how to use social media to attract people to come to evangelistic meetings. And I'm going to go further and explain this as we go along. There's going to be a lot of information. So number one, I encourage you to take notes. Number two, if you have questions, feel free to write them down because at the end, I will take several questions from you. And initially I was going to pause and then continue. However, I think it's important to get the full context. And then from there, you can be able to ask your best questions. With that being said, let us begin. I am so thrilled that the WAD, West Central African Division, is interested in digital evangelism because all of the statistics are telling us that internet usage in West Africa is growing. For example, if you look at statistics from Cameroon, I'm looking at the third circle from the left. It says that internet usage in Cameroon has increased year on year by 2.6%. Per that is 325,000 new users of the internet every single year. And as the internet grows, social media use grows. Digital use grows. Another country, Sierra Leone, also located in this great division, has reported, I'm looking at the third circle from the left, that internet usage has increased in Sierra Leone year over year by 2.1%. That's 57,000 new people using the internet. And notice very carefully, most people in these countries are using the internet on their phones. Sierra Leone, 95% are using it on their phones. In Cameroon, 100%, it says, of social media users and users of the internet are using it on their phone. For example, let's take Ghana. Ghana as well, where my family hails from. If you notice very carefully, I'm looking at the top row, the third circle from the left. It also shows that year over year, 1.9% increase of those who are using the internet. That's 454,000. More people in the West Central African division are getting on the internet and are getting on social media. And they're accessing it through their phones. And if this is the case, then we as the church need to be there. Because when I look at my Jesus, when he traveled on this earth, one powerful thing that he did is that, watch this very carefully, he always met people were where they were. He always met people where they were. And today I'm here to say that if we as a church are going to be effective, we need to meet people where they are. They're on the internet, they're on social media, 
and they're accessing it via their phones. And let me tell you something, the devil is doing evangelism to them. Oh yes, he did, he is. You know an interesting, interesting statistic I found? I found that in many countries in the West Central African division, when they go on Google, their top five searches include two pornography websites, x.com and Pornhub. And so this means that if a lot of people are using social media to access things that are destroying their spiritual life and vitality, then we as a church should work overtime in order to lead them to things that will restore their spiritual health and vitality. If the devil is evangelizing, we must be doing it more so. Before we launch further and deeper into our discussion of digital evangelism, it is essential to ensure that we have a clear working definition of what digital evangelism is. Digital evangelism is the ability to use all digital tools available. Notice my definition very carefully. In order to minister to unbelievers online, it's using websites. So it's not only social media. Websites is a way that digital evangelism is done. Blogs is a way that digital evangelism is done. So you have different kinds of digital evangelism. Social media is just one kind. But what makes digital evangelism digital evangelism is who your audience is. Your audience are unbelievers, those who do not know Jesus Christ. This is in contrast to what is called digital discipleship. While digital evangelism seeks to reach unbelievers, digital discipleship seeks to use digital tools to minister to believers online. And the reason why I am making this clarification is because often churches confuse the two. Churches do digital discipleship thinking that they are doing digital evangelism. So I have seen many churches proliferate Zoom presentations like we are on today. I have seen many of them do Zoom programs like we are on today. I have seen many of them do live streams of their churches as some of yours may do and other online programs. And while these are okay, it must not be confused with digital evangelism because often these programs are only believers. Don't get me wrong. Believers must be ministered to. Believers must be discipled, but it is not digital evangelism. Digital evangelism is when we target the unsaved. I've given you some examples of digital evangelism already, and I will give you some more. For example, here in the United States, there's a church called Columbus Ghana Seventh-day Adventist Church, and they have invested significantly in digital evangelism. They have programs where they teach Sabbath school. They have programs where they literally just take prayer and they do it via YouTube. They deliver it via YouTube and Facebook. That's their delivery system. You have programs. They have programs called Let's Pray, where they literally invite people to share their prayer requests in the chat comments on Facebook and YouTube. And in doing so, they pray for the people. This is digital evangelism. You have other groups. These are groups that are uh, independent ministries, but connected to the Seventh-day Adventist structure, such as Breath of Life. Some of you have heard the name Charles D. Brooks before and Walter Ortiz. They started this. And now it's led by a gentleman called Pastor Debular Snell. And they do podcasts. They do various production programs. These are examples of digital evangelism. Or what of this face right here? Do you know this face? He's very famous. His name is called Doug Batchelor. He has a ministry called Amazing Facts, and they invest heavily into digital evangelism, constantly putting out research programs in order to minister to unbelievers. All of these are examples of digital 
evangelism. And today I want to clarify something critical. When we engage in these types of digital evangelism, there are different metrics for success. But often as a church, here are the metrics of success that we typically look to. When we see that our videos have gotten a lot of views, we feel like it's successful. When we see there's a lot of engagement, maybe through comments, likes, and shares, we say that it is successful. And surely, success can be measured in these kind of ways because it shows that you're planting the seeds. But today, this is not going to be the focus of my presentation. I'm not going to be teaching you how to put on digital evangelism programs so that you can attract more views, comments, likes, and shares. No, that's not my purpose today. My purpose today is to show you how to do digital evangelism, not merely to get the views, the likes, and the comments, but to do something greater. A few minutes ago, we heard our president, Pastor Dr. Robert Jose Bonsu, addressing the entire division, the various unions, missions, and countries represented. And he has challenged us with a great goal, a goal of baptizing 200,000 souls to God's kingdom next year. His own words, he says, what impact 2025 is a divine calling to bring the everlasting gospel to every corner of West Central Africa through united efforts in evangelism, community service, and total member involvement. That is the goal. The goal is not more views. It's not more likes. It's not more comments. It's not more shares. The goals are soul saving. People leaving their homes, coming to our tents, coming to our churches, hearing the word, responding to the appeal, going down to the water to be baptized, accepted into church membership, and then becoming disciple makers themselves. That is the goal. And because that is the goal, what I aim to do today is to teach you how to use digital tools in order to draw someone to get up from their home, leave their house, and attend your evangelistic events so that they can hear the word of God and be revived, transformed, and changed. That is the goal of the presentation today. It's not to say the other things are bad, but it's to say that we are doing a narrow work in our talk today. I must share one quick thing that I have observed. I was studying the report of the West Central African Division that was shared in the GC. And I noticed something very striking to me. I noticed the membership and where the membership comes from in the West Central African Division. And as I was making these observations, I noticed that the West Central African Division has a membership of nearly 1 million. However, three territories or three countries are the ones that contribute 900,000 members, meaning 87% of the membership comes from 13% of the countries. This is not to shame any country. This is not to criticize any country. It's to simply say this is to say that in this presentation, my goal is that as you learn how to use digital tools to evangelize, that the territories that are growing exponentially will keep on growing. And that the territories that are less populated will benefit so much from this presentation that we will see you uh, baptize so many souls and have so much growth through Wide Impact 2025, specifically using digital tools. But also, I bring this up to show that during different points of my presentation, I am going to be using data and statistics in order to ensure that these data and statistics are relevant to the territory. I am pulling data and statistics that come out from the three countries that contribute the majority of the members to the division. This is no disrespect to any other of the countries. But in this way, it gives us a holistic sample. 
With that being said, let me move into my story. My name is Quadro Chumasi, as was introduced by Dr. Asien. And while I was born in the United States of America, as you can hear probably from my name, my face, the skin color, maybe a tinge in my accent, my family is based in Ghana. And my father, his name is called Dr. Samson Chumasi. He's an international evangelist, church pastor, radio speaker, and Bible teacher. At a young age, my father, Dr. Samson Chumasi, did something incredible for me. He took me on my first international mission trip to none other than the Republic of Ghana. I ministered alongside him at the age, at the tender age of 17. He was preaching in one location and I was preaching in another. You know, the best thing you can do for your children is give them an opportunity to serve in the Lord's vineyard. That mission trip was so powerful that 300 people gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I was so blessed and impacted by that mission trip that in the words of my father, I caught the mission bug and I was determined that mission should not stop. And so from there, he organized another opportunity for me to go to Kenya in order to share the word of God. And again, I saw the Lord move as 300 souls were baptized. From there, that's when along with a few of my friends, we started an organization called Mission Driven Purpose. And we began to do more evangelism in many places of the world, but also in Africa. And we have seen the Lord's hand move in a mighty way. In 2022, 2022, we were in Malawi. And literally, the Lord blessed so much so that I witnessed with my own eyes 811 people giving their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. Would someone put amen in the chat? 811 people giving their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, even last year, we got an opportunity to go to Ghana. And there, after we had finished our campaign, 2,170 hearts gave their lives to the Lord. I'm just here to say that I have seen God move in mighty ways. And as I share these numbers, I want you to know that every number, it's not about the numbers. But instead, every number is a name. And every name has a story. Come on, somebody. Don't let me preach here today. Every number is a name. And every name has a story that has been transformed by the cross of Jesus Christ. A story like Richard, who was baptized. And when he was baptized, he received a Bible. And as he was reading the Bible, he said, thank you for baptizing me and giving me this Bible. Because for years, I had heard that God created the world. But for the first time, I get to read it for myself. Stories like that. Stories as well. Stories like the gentleman who you see, whom he was coming to our evangelistic campaigns, the one on the right. And wow, he was so touched by it. And he was getting ready to be baptized. But the day before he was baptized, his mother died. When his mother died, I remember I walked up to him and I said, friend, you don't have to go ahead and get baptized. He looked at me and said, pastor, it is in times of crisis that I need to draw closer to the Lord, not away from him. Stories like that. Stories like these prisoners that you see, whom when we did an evangelistic campaign one time, they decided to give their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they made a choice to follow him because they said, even though we are physically in chains, if the son has set us free, we are free indeed. Every number is a name and every name is a story that has been transformed by Jesus. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because I'm trying to make a key point. And the key point is this, effective digital evangelism does not begin with a love for technology. 
Instead, effective digital evangelism begins with a love for souls. You've got to love that young boy that has never read the book of Genesis. You've got to love those prisoners that have been written off by society. You've got to love that drug addict that's still using cocaine. You've got to love that young person who is still being promiscuous in the strip club. You've got to love that family that's still practicing polygamy. You've got to love those people that are still practicing witchcraft. You've got to love that businessman who is too caught up in secular pursuits. You've got to love souls to be an effectively effective digital evangelist. It doesn't begin with a love for tech. It begins with a love for people. And this love for people can only be instilled in you if you surrender your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ so that he puts his love in you. And then his love in you is what flows out to others. I hope someone is getting the word today. I want to make sure you're not sleeping on me. I want to make sure you're not checking out on me. And so if you are hearing me, just write the word love for souls. Write the words love for souls in the chat. Love for souls. Because that's where digital evangelism starts from. Write the words love for souls. Love for souls. Notice, even in what I am doing, I am modeling digital evangelism. I am using techniques and strategies to get engagement from you, even though I'm not directly in front of you. Right, love for souls. That's where it starts from. Now, the question people have asked me many times, they say, wow, Pastor Koja, I'm hearing about the ways that God has used you to evangelize in Africa, Malawi, Kenya, Ghana, and so on and so forth, the countries I've been to. And the question that folks ask me from time to time is, Pastor Koja, what method do you use to effectively evangelize. Maybe you're in Cameroon today and you're saying, Pastor Kojo, what methods when you come to Africa are you using to effectively evangelize? Maybe you are in Sierra Leone and you're saying, Pastor Kojo, what methods are you using to effectively evangelize? I'm so happy to tell you that I don't have my own method. The only method I have is Christ. And there's a lady called Ellen White who wrote a book called Ministry of Healing. And in page 73, paragraph four, she explains what Christ's method is. She says, his method alone gives true success in reaching them. The Savior mingled with people as one who desired their good. He showed sympathy for them. He ministered to their needs. He won their confidence. And then he invited them, come and follow me. This is the only method that I employ because it is the method of Jesus. And... Today, I'm here to say that in order to be effective evangelists, we must be using this method all the time. We must be mingling with people daily, showing sympathy and meeting their needs daily. We must inviting them, be inviting them to follow Jesus daily. But I also believe that we as a church, both as individuals, members of the church, and the church as an organization, should be having special seasons of exclusive and intensive evangelism where we are harvesting souls to Jesus Christ. These special seasons are what we call evangelistic campaigns. I wholeheartedly believe in evangelistic campaigns. And at this juncture, it is to this specific aspect of Christ's method, evangelistic campaigns, that I am going to be referring to a lot when I speak about evangelism. So the question was, Pastor Koja, what method do you use when you evangelize in Africa, especially in evangelism campaigns? Again, I said we've used Christ's method. And Christ's method is used when we do our evangelistic campaigns. Matter of fact, my team and I have come up with three steps based on Christ's method that we use in order to minister effectively in Africa. Step one, when we are running evangelistic campaigns, the first step 
is always to invite. It begins with an invitation. This step of inviting is what we call marketing or what Ellen White called mingling. And we're going to come back to this. Step two is we engage. This is what Ellen White called compassion, meeting people's needs, with them. But it also involves proclamation, preaching the three angels' message. And then number three, we make appeals. This is where we call people to make a decision to follow Christ. And we follow up with ongoing discipleship. Invite, engage, appeal. Now, I wish I could spend time talking about how to make effective appeals, but that's not the scope of my discussion. I wish I could spend time talking about the best ways to engage, do compassion ministries, and preach effectively, but that's not the scope of my discussion. I exclusively want to focus on the step one of how to effectively invite and bring crowds to your campaigns through marketing. And hold on in this presentation because I'm going to bring it home as we talk about digital evangelism, digital marketing. Again, I'm still in Africa. In Africa, how do we invite effectively? I'm talking about myself and my team when we come and preach and teach. How do we invite effectively? Well, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna teach you something important about marketing. There are two kinds of marketing. The first is what we call awareness marketing. You see, awareness marketing is where you are simply trying to inform the public about the event that you have. In order to do a general awareness marketing, we often rely on TV, billboards, radio, something like what you see in that picture. Now, while awareness marketing is helpful, the truth is, and while it could be very effective, the truth is, is that it is not the most effective because there's another kind of marketing that must be used adjacent to awareness marketing. And it's what we call direct marketing. What is direct marketing? Direct marketing is not where you are just simply trying to inform people of an event but it's where you are seeking to get people to commit to coming to your event. Who's out there, please do not miss this. This is the linchpin of my presentation. I will be coming back to this concept again and again. I will say this one more time. There are how many or there are two different kinds, how many kinds of marketing? Two. There is awareness marketing and there is direct marketing. Awareness is where you are just Informing the public of what's happening, TV, billboards, radio. But direct marketing is where you're not just informing people of what's happening, but you are soliciting a commitment from them in order to come for them to come to your event. The commitment could be verbal. Yes, Pastor, I will be there. It could be written, texting you. Yes, I will see you at the event. Or it can be through a form of registration as well awareness marketing, and direct marketing. Now, with that being said, I have a question for the audience. I don't want you to sleep. I want you to stay engaged. Between awareness marketing and direct marketing, both are important. But my question to you is, which method is more valuable? Which one is more valuable? Awareness marketing or direct marketing? Type in the chat and let me know what you think. I'm going to pause my screen. I want to see Type it in chat. Let me know what you think. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see what your responses are saying. I want to see what people are saying. I have stopped sharing my screen so that I can see this. All right. I'm seeing Samson say direct marketing. Uh, Fur uh, Furaha saying direct marketing. Jackson saying direct marketing. Okay, someone argued for awareness. Someone said direct. Okay, I'm getting a lot of directs in the chat. I'm getting a lot of directs in the chat. I'm loving the engagement. I'm getting a lot of directs. All right, I'm getting a few awareness, but I'm still getting a lot of directs. Excellent, 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 excellent. I'm seeing direct marketing, and you are 100% correct. I'm sharing my screen again so that you can follow along with me. Let's look at it. Why is direct marketing more valuable? It's more valuable. Hear this statement. If you don't want to miss this, friends, if you're taking notes, take a note. I saw some of you doing screenshots. If you're doing screenshots, do a screenshot of this. 
Direct marketing is more valuable because in evangelism, and watch this, whoo, especially digital evangelism, getting a commitment for your event is more valuable than merely informing people about your events. Getting a commitment for your event is more valuable than merely informing people about your event. So the question is this, when I come to Africa, when I come to Ghana, Kenya, wherever, how exactly do we do direct marketing? I've talked to you about how we do awareness marketing. Yes, there's the billboards. Yes, there's the signs. But how do we do direct? Or And sometimes, and some of you guys know that there's the Pathfinder groups that will walk around, the singing groups. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Y'all know I know this. The singing groups that will sing around in the community. All of that is good. That's all awareness marketing. But how do we do direct marketing? We recruit an evangelism team. Some of you call it a lay team or the visitation team. And when we recruit the visitation team, sometimes it's a group of 30 to 35 volunteers. They leave their jobs. They leave their businesses. They come and sleep at the church. And every single day, they spend morning to evening dividing themselves into different teams. Usually if we have 35 volunteers, we may have 17 teams, teams of two. And they go out knocking on doors, talking to people, encouraging them to come out to the evangelistic meeting. Usually when I lead a visitation team, I task every single team to do 100 visitations per day. Wow. Did you just see what I, what I just said? 100 visitations a day. Now let me tell you something. The first time I tell this to the team, they look at me and say, we can't do this. We can't do this. But then, you know what happens? The next day comes and they'll say, Pastor, we got 110 visitations. We got 120 visitations. Come on, somebody. Because it is possible. And we encourage them. Don't only get an invitation, but get commitments. At least 50. And notice very carefully. If 17 teams, 100 invitations, that's 1,700 invitations. If they're getting commitments, that's 850 commitments. And wow, this is what attracts great crowds to come to the meetings. And here I want to make, when the crowd comes, see the compassion, and they hear the word, the Holy Spirit does the rest. And folks give their hearts to Christ and are baptized. Therefore, it leads me to another key point. And the key point is this. In evangelism, if you're taking notes, please jot this down. Evangelism, especially digital evangelism, the initial, especially through direct marketing, is to crowds to walk into your church. After you do, once they hear the message, once they feel the compassion, spirit does the rest and souls get saved. Someone write in the chat, write crowds, write the word crowds in the chat, write the word crowds. The goal is to get crowds to the church, write the word crowds. The goal is to get crowds to come into your church because once they come in, and they hear that word, the Holy Spirit does the rest. And as you've seen many times when they come to Africa, we do this through not just awareness marketing, direct marketing, where we give people invitations and encourage them to make a commitment to come to the campaign. This only one part of my story. What has done through our ministry in Africa. But then people ask the question, they say, well, pastor, though, you live in America. Stick with me, everybody. I'm going to follow this home. I'm going to be talking about digital evangelism. Don't go anywhere. If you're a creative, if you're a, you're a church pastor, you need to stay to the end because I'm But well, you've got to hear the story. So folks ask, they say, well, pastor, I hear you, what you're saying. I hear what you're saying about evangelism in Africa what you're saying about awareness marketing. I hear what you're saying about direct marketing. Maybe I haven't been doing this before. I'm going to start doing it now. But you are in America. 
And my question to you, Pastor, is do you evangelize? The truth is, evangelism in America is no joke. Right. Just like how it is in many places in Africa as well, I must also admit. Many times when folks are doing evangelism campaign, if it's not a big production, the average baptisms are about 10. The retention is about 20%. And so I get your question. Do you do evangelism in the States? And if you do, do you use the same strategies I've been about what we do in Africa? And if you do something different, can these strategies be applied to an African context? Stick questions. Let me continue with my story. I told you that at the age 17, my the opportunity to go to Ghana to do an international mission trip. But before that, at the age 16, one of his churches, First Ghana Seventh-day Adventist Church, gave me the opportunity in order to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 16 years of an evangelistic meeting, and 16 people were baptized. Well, from there, I've done other campaigns in the United States. And usually, this was from 2013 to 2022, 14 people were typically baptized her campaign. Ooh, but are you ready for this, everybody? I'm about to drop out. But from 2023 going, something changed. I said something changed. I said something changed. Let me show you. I started in a new church called Northwood Seventh-day Adventist Church, and there were only about 15 members in regular attendance at that church. But we decided that we were going to do an evangelistic meeting. Are you ready for this, everybody? I said, are you ready? I'm getting ready to show you. We did our... And on the opening night, 276 non adventists showed up to this event. I brought the pictures for the proof. Check it out, everybody. And by the time we finished, 51 people asked for Christ and were baptized. Wow, incredible. What changed? getting ready to show you. Then in the same year, 2023, we did a meeting in another one of my churches. Look at the crowd, 120 people showed up. 35 people got baptized at the end of the campaign. Wow, what changed? I'm getting ready to tell you. Summer alone, we did an evangelistic campaign and 1,000 people, yes, you heard me correctly, 1,000 people, showed up on the opening night. Look at the picture on the left. That's how long the lines were. People couldn't even fit in church. <laughs> people couldn't even fit in church. On average, people were coming a night. And by the time we finished, 104 people gave their hearts to Jesus Christ and were baptized. And by the way, check that picture out right there. Dr. Asim was there in order to see what was taking place. The question, what changed? It's what I'm getting ready to teach you right now. It's going to be the heart of our discussion today. We still use the same three steps of Christ's method, invite, engage, appeal. But today, but this time around, from 2023 going, we have done different when it comes to we have done something different when it comes to the invitations. We still do the awareness marketing, TV, billboards, radio. But when it comes to the direct marketing, you're not just trying to inform people of the campaign, but to solicit a commitment. We have to do something different. In Africa, we are able to recruit evangelism teams. But in America, you to do so. You don't have volunteers available. Folks don't want you to knock on your doors here in the States. Come on, somebody. You see, that's one thing I love when I come to Africa. Everybody want me to knock. Folk, you know, in Africa, we value business. So when you come to us, remember I was in Kenya, you know, folks were throwing bananas at me. Come on, talk to me, somebody. They wanted me to come and eat. It's the same thing. Because folks want you at their door here. Out of culture. And so in order to do our direct marketing, we can't use evangelism. And so what do we use in order to not just make people aware of the campaign, commitments to the campaign? Here it is, everybody. You've been waiting. 
all along. And I am finally revealing it to you. You should. I'll say that again. We use digital evangelism, specifically digital marketing, social media. And with this tool, not only do we our evangelism event, we are commitments. We are able to gain those people to come to our programs, and we are able to gain many people to be baptized. It literally from clicks to crowds. I said from clicks to and I'm about to show you how that is today. Come on, somebody. Let's get into it. All right. Woo. Everybody take a break. Stretch your this is the this is my, my presentation has three part one. This is part two. So stretch. I'm about to give you the juice. This is what you paid for today. This is what you paid for. You guys are paying for, you guys are paying for this thing. So this is, get your money's worth out of this. No, I'm joking. This is pro, because I love, I love the work of the Lord. Everybody, let's talk about it. How do we use social media? Come on, y'all. Use social media in order to go from clicks to crowds. I see some hands raised. Don't worry. Jot all your questions down. I'm going to answer all of them. At Guide has your hand raised. Don't worry. I'm going to answer. All right, so let's get into it. Here's social media. Very quickly, social media is a technology platform to share information. You need internet most of the time to some sort of data. Here are all the kinds of social media. You got YouTube is the social media. Twitter or X, formerly known as Twitter, is. And then I'm going to get into it. The Social media, especially in West Africa, and I'll show you the data, is none other. What do you think is the most popular one, everybody? I want to see it. What do you think is the most popular social media in Africa? What do you think popular social media in Africa? West Africa. Let me see. Facebook, 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 Facebook. Facebook are wrong. Oh, it's when TikTok, TikTok, all oh, you put TikTok are wrong. Oh, now the right is coming. Now the right answer is coming. What's that? What's that? What's that? right? No, not Instagram. Not Instagram. Not Instagram. Definitely what's that? Okay, some are telling me that my voice is cutting up a little bit. I'm not sure why. Um, my, 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 my connection is very stable. Um, Maybe if Dr. Sim is there, if you can give me a, uh, if you can respond to me and let me know that uh, you all are still here, that would be very helpful. I just need someone to confirm that. Or I just... your 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 voice is, uh, is 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 breaking, but I think it's it's good it's good now. Okay, so if it's breaking like that again. Um, uh, just feel free, uh, doctor, to raise your hand so I can see. And just let me know so that in case there's any adjustment that has to be made, then just right. make it. Thank right. you so much. People to lose this valuable information. All right, let's continue. I think you all are doing a fantastic job. Everyone has said WhatsApp, WhatsApp. Absolutely. Great. WhatsApp is the most popular. So that's what social media is. It's a tech platform to share information. Now, the question is this, why use social media? I'm going to give you as to why you should use and why we use social media. Social media has tools. It has incredible to help you market your event. Tools from how to find tools on how to position your um, buyers properly. It has tools for your event. The second T is that social media is teeming. It's teeming. Social media is where people are. Literally, almost half is on social media. Three people. Talk to me, somebody. If that's where people are, we need to be there. The third is trust. Social media is what people trust, funny enough. You know, I, I will... <laughs> let me pause and tell you. You know, sometimes believe WhatsApp videos more than they will believe me as their pastor, what I'm teaching them in church. They'll say, pastor, I hear what you're teaching. But this WhatsApp video. Come on. Can I get a witness somebody? 
say someone sent me this WhatsApp video. Some more of what they see on YouTube than what they read in their Bibles. People trust social media for information. We should use social media because it's what people. We should use social media because it's what people spend their time on. On average, people are spending about two to four on social media every day. We should use social media because because it's teaming, because of trust, because of but we also use social media because it's thrifty, because to use social media, you can do more money. You know, sometimes to advertise on radio costs a lot, to advertise on TV, to put up a billboard costs, but to use social media, it's less and you get more results. And finally, so a sixth T is that you can do track, tracking. You can be able to get per people's so you can do additional outreach to them. Teaming, trust, time, thrifty, tracking. This is why all churches must be tools in order to help people move from crowds. If you want to take a picture of that slide, take it there. Take it there. Take those notes. If you want to take a picture of that slide, take it there. That's powerful for you. Let's transition. I've talked to you about what social media is. I've talked to you about why we should use social media. Now, I know your million or your million CDs question. Or your million Naira question. Your question is, how did we as our use social media in order to take people to crowds. I'm gonna show you how. And it is through four key, four key steps. The digital marketing happens in four key. Step number one is that you have to create the content. This is how you do effective digital evangelism. You have to create the content. You have to create the evangelism a flyer to advertise it, to advertise it. You've got to create the content to make sure you're still with me. Someone type content, create the content. Someone type content, create the content. Someone type content. Okay, I see some people typing content. Let's say something that's gonna be very revolutionary. Oftentimes, especially a Seventh-day Adventist, when we make our flyers, we only make our advertising the religious and the spiritual aspects of our But a friend of mine taught me a new strategy. He said, Kojo, don't just advertise this. Advertise all of the attraction and the incentives for your evangelistic meeting. Don't just put it on flyer create multiple flyers in order to add all of the incentives and attractives for your evangelistic so for the content let me show you a few things i told you that in order evangelism meeting it's not just about proclaiming but it's also about compassion and so in many of my evangelists Passion initiatives, such as free items that people in the community need. Sometimes we give away. And so what we would do is that we would make up advertising, not just the powerful preaching, but also advertising. The On the advertisement for the free diaper, we still let people know that there's going to be biblical that we still let people know we let them know that you're going to receive this felt need item as well and let me tell you, it makes people attracted to it this is some of the effective content that we make sometimes in our evangelistic meeting we give away free now uh, I, I see some of the groceries here 
American crowd. So uh, maybe some in Africa may not be interested in spaghetti and pasta sauce. But hey, man, you know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Guys, we love rice, and so um, uh, what's it called um, with rice? Well, I want to make sure you all are hearing me. So let me just pause and do a check. Are you, is, is, are folks still hearing me, Doctor Asim? Yes, but your voice is still breaking. So uh, it's breaking from time to time. So I don't know if it's from your side or from us. It's not from his side. I've been. It's a problem from the listener's side, the other side, because I can get him without any problem. Oh, you get him without any problems. Okay. Well, it depends. Maybe at your at their very various places, connectivity is a problem. So okay. from here. To can continue but let's do it this way. it's perfect also it's being recorded i still see some people saying i hear him clearly i see him saying he's breaking so i'm seeing opposing things so let's do it this way the presentation is being recorded thankfully and so i'm just going to ask you to try and do your best that's what you can at the same time um at the same time there is the powerpoint slides so you're capable of seeing that and then after it's done i guess the administration can disseminate it so that folks can be able or maybe put it up on a YouTube or platform so that folks can be able to watch. And so I so think that's it is being live streamed on the YouTube and Facebook of the division. Exactly. So exactly. We'll go about it that way. All right, let me finish on so we can finish this presentation and uh, be, be, be on our way. Uh, where am I? Here. If you've been blessed so far, just put blessed. If you've been blessed so far, just put blessed. I don't know if you've been blessed, but if you've been blessed so far, please just put blessed. I hope, uh, enriching for you. If you've been blessed so far, please put blessed. All right. Excellent. Let's go ahead and share. I'm seeing blessed. I'm seeing blessed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's go ahead and share our screen so that we can finish up our presentation. All right, we're still talking about from this to crowds. So I told you, how do we use social media to go from a click to crowd? Remember, the first step is that you have to create the content, the flyers, the uh, something that's advertising the event. But the point I'm making is don't just advertise the spiritual portion of the event. Advertise the felt needs for portions of the event. Give them away diapers, do so. If you're giving away groceries, do so. Many times in my evangelistic initiatives, I have kids activities. Doing kids activities, create a flyer for that as well. Things that attract folks. Sometimes in my evangelistic initiative, we free toiletries. Advertise that as well. Now, I know your question may be, well, pastor, how are we going to get all of this? Be creative. You can fund for it. Uh, you can reach out to people, whether they're home or abroad, in order to bring some of those goods and services. You can reach the organizations in order to help you with some of those items. Use some of your budget that you receive conference in order to purchase some of those items. And you can be able to give them away to the community. Because remember, it's not only about proclamation, it's also about compassion, meeting people's needs. And you want to be able to advertise it effectively. And so not only creating the buyers for the spiritual component, but also making the flyer for the felt needs component. And you're not hiding the spiritual component because even on those flyers, you clarify and articulate that biblical messages are being. So step one is that if you wanna go from clicks to crowds, you've got to create content that will attract people. Because the question everyone is always asking is in business, we call it with him, with him. W-I-F-I-M, WIFM. And WIFM stands for what is immediately in it for me. But that's the question everyone is asking. If you're trying to get someone to come to your event, the question they're asking is what's immediately in it with them. Now, traditionally as a church, we have said what's in it for you, spiritual value. And that is true. Matter of fact, that is the best that is there for you. But by engaging in compassion initiatives, they also get something that is tangible that is in it for them. And this is not manipulation. This is not you trying to buy their allegiance. No, instead, it is being able to show love 
and compassion to the community. Why? Because it is the method of Jesus. Moving forward, so the first step is that you've got to create the content if you're going to do effective digital marketing. Second step, and this is a big one that many of us forget, Assembly of Venice, us as Africans, even here as Americans, and this is going to be powerful. I told you this is a powerful step today. When you make your content, you have got to include a call to action, a call to action. When you make the flyer or the content, you've got to include a call to action. I can tell you the amount of flyers that I've seen, the amount of banners that I've seen, where all they have is the dates and the time, but there's no call to action. So when I look at that flyer, I ask myself, okay, I see the date, I see the time, but what else am I supposed to do with this? That's where you're supposed to fill in the gap and put in a call to action. So look very carefully at my flyers. At all my flyers, there is a call to action. Check out the free diapers flyer. You see that there's a place where it says, register now, a call to action. Look at the free groceries flyer. For our, this is for one of my evangelistic campaigns that I just did uh, a few, a few, a few, uh, about a month ago. And praise the Lord, 87 people were baptized right here in the States, Toledo, Ohio. Look at it. It says register now. That's a call to action. Look at our fire free kids activities. That was also advertising the campaign, but another call to action, register now. Another call to action, register now. Look at even the spiritual flyer. I want you to look at the spiritual flyer. Look at the bottom. At the bottom, it says, register now. You've always got to have a call to action. So here's my point. Even if you're on WhatsApp, this is how you do effective digital evangelism, to get commitments, to get commitments I'm talking about. If you're on WhatsApp and you put a status and you're advertising the flyer, on the next flyer, say, send me a message if you're going to attend. That's a call to action in order to gain a commitment. And you're going to see your clicks go the crowds. All right, moving forward. I told you it's four steps, digital marketing. First, you build the content. Then you do a call to action, a call to action. You can ask them to register. You can ask them to send you a personal message. You can ask them, whatever the case may be, this is digitally, a call to action. Then from there, you pick a platform, you pick a platform and you pick a platform in order to put up your flyer and your call to action. The plat there are different platforms you can use and there are different advantages of using one over the other. Facebook by far is the biggest platform. So my church uses Facebook and Facebook is connected to Instagram. And so we used Instagram as well. And this is the platform where we put our flyer and our call to action. Now, for West African Central Division, it may be WhatsApp. That's where you need to put your flyer, your content, and your call to action. Now, in order to make the flyer and the call to action more effective, what we did as a church is that we paid social media. So... We would set up the flyer in such a way it's called an ad or an advertisement where we can invest money into Facebook. And what Facebook does is that Facebook posts your ad all the time in front of the people who you want them to see it without you having to do it manually every single time. This is what we call paid advertising, paid advertisement. You may not be able to do paid advertisement, and that's okay. That means that you'll just have to keep doing it manually. But if you can do a paid advertisement, this is very effective so that your ad or your flyer, whether it's a flyer or a video, can run constantly and it can get in front of people who you need them to see it. So what are my steps again? Content call to action, pick your platform. Now notice very carefully, when we put it on the platform, I want you guys to see this. I want you to see that this is the evidence. This is what we did. We made our flyers. You saw all my flyers. 
we put the call to action. We told people register now. And the way we did the register now is that we created a registration form. So after we put the flyer, we'll say register, 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 and register using this link. And once we put it on Facebook and Instagram, remember the content, the call to action, and we put it on the platform. I want you to see something. People began to register. I did this for one of my father's churches. 97 people registered. You see the number up there. I did it for another church. 121 people registered. You see it right there. Woo, look at that number, everybody. Look at that number. I did this for a church in Cincinnati. Look at that number, everybody. I can't make this up. <laughs> I can't make this up. This, we put the flyers out. We put the call to act. You see, that's what I'm trying to say. If you're going to be effective digital marketing, you've got to put the flyers or the video or the content and put a call to action so that you can get a commitment from someone in order to come to your evangelistic meeting. We put it out and 2,752 people registered for our evangelistic campaign. Someone put amen in the chat. Someone put amen in the chat. 2,752 people. Someone put, uh, my friend will say, will you say amen out there? Someone put amen in the chat. I'm telling you, this is how you do effective digital marketing. Call to action. Now, notice very carefully at the form. Notice the three things we ask for. What's your name, your first and your last, and what's your phone number? Why do I ask for that? Because people can say, I commit to come to your event all the time. But you know what happens? They say, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> they say, sorry, I forgot to come. So guess what? When I have your name and I've got your phone number, guess what I can do? Step number four, I can remind you. I can text you and say, hey, don't forget to come. I can text you or I can call you and say, hey, don't forget to come. And this is effective in reaching folks. I hope you're grabbing this so far, everybody. Hope you're grabbing this so far. I see some people are kind of writing on the presentation. It makes it a little hard to see. So I'm going to kindly ask that you refrain from doing so, uh, so that we will be able to, um, so that everybody can be able to see the presentation well. All right, so these are the four steps of how to do digital marketing effectively. Create the content. Make sure you have a call to action. Put it on the right platform. And once you get the information, maybe a name, maybe a phone number, remind them, remind them, remind them, remind them to come. Here are examples of the text messages that we send out. Take a look at the one on the right. We'll send a text message, our free clothes. Today is our free clothes night. Come and get something for yourself and your child. We also have free sandwiches. Doors open at 5.30. There will be music, prizes, and a powerful message of hope. You see, we tell people, a powerful message of hope. Then clothes and food. Come, come, come. Reminding people to come. Look at the one on the left. Your free laundry pots, Chick-fil-A sandwich, dish soap, and dryer sheets are ready for you today. All of this at Hope for Today. That's our event. Prior to these giveaways, there will be music, prizes, and an inspiring spiritual message and kids fun. Registration starts at X and X time. Notice, this is what we do to remind people to come. So again, look at the four steps. Create the content. Don't just advertise the spiritual part. Advertise even the practical benefits. Put a call to action. Tell people what to do. Tell them to register. Give them your name. Give them your phone number. Send me a private message that you're coming. Put it on the right platform, the platform where your audience is. And then once they take action, remind them, remind them, remind them, remind them to come. And you will see your clicks go to crowds. This is what we did. And the Lord blessed our work tremendously. I got to come to a close now. We're reaching an end. The question is this. Pastor Koja, everything you said sounds lovely, but can this work in a work West African context? Maybe it can. There are some obstacles. Sometimes, you know, some countries or some areas, some villages may not have people who are on social media. 
human behavior. Maybe people are not used or even know how to take action on social media and funds. Maybe churches don't have enough funds to pay for advertising. But this does not mean, even despite these obstacles, this does not mean that you in West Africa cannot use social media to draw crowds to your campaign. You can, but you must use social media strategically. How do you use social media strategically? Here's the last part of my presentation. It's gonna take about five to 10 minutes, then I'm done. Here's the last part of my presentation. How can the average Seventh-day Adventist church or member in West Africa use social media strategically. Even if you have these obstacles, maybe you can't pay for advertisement. Maybe uh, a lot of people in your community are not on uh, social media, but how can you still use it in, in order to go from clicks to crowds? Again, my answer, you must use social media strategic. And here is how to do so very quickly. Strategic is on the left, non-strategic is on the right. Quickly, I'm giving you these quick points, everybody. I'm giving you these quick points. Number one, to use social media strategically so that you can go from clicks to crowds, you've got to be advertising your evangelistic campaign on the right platform. Strategic people advertise on the right platform. Not strategic people advertise on any platform. Don't be non-strategic, be strategic. Someone put strategic in the chat. Someone put strategic in the chat. Be strategic, be strategic. Pick the right platform. What's the right platform in Ghana? 91.8% of people are on WhatsApp, 77% are on Facebook. If you're not advertising on WhatsApp, if you're not advertising on Facebook, you won't go from clicks to crowds. Pick the right platform. Nigeria, WhatsApp, 95%. Facebook, 75%. Please advertise on the right platforms. Don't go on Pinterest. Ain't nobody there is going to come if you advertise over there from clicks to crowds. And I can go on and on and on. Most countries, it's WhatsApp and and. and, and, and and Facebook. Number two, if you're going to use social media strategically, make sure you have local non-Adventists in your network. If I'm on WhatsApp, the people on WhatsApp who see my status are those whose numbers I have in my phone. If I don't have any non-Adventists in my phone, if I don't have any non-Adventists in my local community in my phone, they will never see my advertisements. So make sure you have local non-Adventists in your network. If on your Facebook page, you don't have local non-Adventist friends, they will never see your advertisements. So strategic people have local non-Adventists in their network. Non-strategic uh, folks do not have non-Adventists in their network. And so if you have local non-Adventists in your network, you will be effective from going to clicks to crowds. If you do not, you will not be effective. Have Local non adventists in your social media network. That's how you become strategic. Number three, to be strategic, use variation. I've already taught you. Don't only advertise the spiritual flyer. Advertise the flyer for the tangible benefits. Let me show you something. You know, this is a statistic. Uh, I can't see it too. I think this is in Ghana. And it says this is the kind of online videos people like to watch. Start from the top and, uh, and start from the top left. Any kind of video, 91%. Look at it. Music videos. 54% love watching music videos online. To effectively promote your campaign, why don't you use music? Why don't you use a song? It can help catch attention. Then put a call attention so that you can gain a commitment and you will take people from clicks to crowds. Look at the, the next one. 56% of folks enjoy watching comedy or a meme. So why don't you do an advertisement where there is some lightheartedness to it, some fun, a little joke. This is creative. It will catch someone's attention and help them go from a click to a crowd. Is everyone following along? So use variation. Use different kinds of advertisements and flyers. And that's how you use social media strategically, not non-strategically. The next one, always have a call to action. I have said this and I will say it and I will say it and I will say it and I will say it, I will say it, I will say it. Have a call to action. Strategic social media users have calls to action. Non-strategic have no calls to action. Put a call to action. Look, for example, I just put this on my own WhatsApp. I advertised the digital evangelism seminar and I put a call to action. I said, join us now on the next status. 
That's a call to action. That's how you use digital evangelism effectively. Be strategic by posting frequently. If you only post the flyer one time, if you only post the flyer two times, it's not going to catch attention. But if you post it every single day for at least a month, someone is going to have to take notice. That's how you go from clicks to crowds. Don't post sporadically, post frequently. And finally, work as a team in order to use social media strategically. Don't just try to promote the evangelistic event in isolation. Work together as a team. I remember in my church, I made social media teams that will have 10, 15 people. And every day their task was to post a flyer on WhatsApp and Facebook and Instagram. And we got registrations. I told my team post at the same time so that it can catch people's attention. And we it was effective. Then I told my team. Do viral sharing. For example, post in all of your groups that you're in. Tell your friends to post it on their pages and post in their groups. Call your auntie and uncle and say, do we have a local family group? Can we post in there? And reach out to Adventist influencers or even other kind of influencers you may know to have them post for you. For example, in Ghana, the first female Adventist high court judge was just sworn into office. Can we imagine if for Wide Impact 2025, we, if she has a social media platform, we ask her to post our flyer for us. She has a big audience. People will see it and they will, and she gives them a call to action. They will register. That's how it works. You use a team. And so again, I'm putting it up so that you don't lose it. If you want to effectively go from clicks to crowd, use social media strategically. Here's how to use it strategically, here's how it's not. And if you use it strategically, you will be able to succeed. As I close, I wanna give you the success triangle. Ultimately speaking, digital evangelism is hard work, but it's rewarding work. And this is what it requires. You must have a passion for souls. You must use social media thoughtfully or strategically, and you must be dedicated to the task. And if you are, you will see people go from clicks to crowds. This is my final picture. You know, can you see all these people over here? This is, this is one of my churches. This is Northwood Church. And all those people who are standing there holding certificates, I had never met those people in my life. Never. But they came to our evangelistic meeting that I just had in September for today. And do you know how they came? It's because they saw an advertisement on social media and they clicked it and they joined the crowd. And once they joined the crowd, they felt the compassion, heard the word, and they gave their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ to be baptized. And now look at them standing as members of the Seventh-day Adventist church. This is what can happen this is what will happen when we use our digital tools to take people from clicks to crowds to disciples to disciple makers. May God help us do this now and forever. Amen. Amen. We will take questions. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor, for this powerful presentation, engaging presentation. And uh, we will take some questions. If you have questions, please write them right at the inside the chat box. How do we get the presentation for our Perugia? That's Prof. Inkum Kumson, who's asking the question. And uh, any other one, I don't see. Most of people are asking for the presentation. I think we will avail the presentation as he promised. You, you heard him very well. Okay, how to write the commitment well? It's another question, Pastor, if you can address that one while others are writing down their questions. Great question. It's a very, very easy way to uh, uh, do the, the commitment. Um, 
Very easy, very easy. You don't want to make it complicated. For example, if you post on WhatsApp and you want someone to come, this is the simple way you do it. In your next status, just simply say, if you're coming, text me back and say coming. That's it. Text me back and say coming. Or let's say WhatsApp has a cool feature called a broadcast list. So you can put all your non-Adventists in a broadcast list that are in your community to send a message to them for them to come to your campaign. And if you could write in that message and say, if you are going to be there, write back and say there. Just write back and say there. And that's how you know they're going to be there. Now, for example, if you're on Facebook or something, and this is not people on your contact list, then you can tell people, send me a personal message or comment on my post and say I'm coming. Or you can say something like, you can put a form, you can make a little form using Google, Google Forms, and say, fill out this form with your name and your phone number so we can save your seat. Another word you can do is say, you can say, reserve your seat now. Seats are running out fast. And so in order to reserve your seat, say reserve, you see? So you always want to make it simple. Thank you. There are other, another question. How have you managed membership retention after click to crowds? Great question. Membership retention varies from church to church. Sometimes it's 20%. Sometimes it's 50%. But here's what I always say. This is what I always say. This is what I always say. Even if all you retain is one person, that's always one more than you have there's one more than you would have ever had if you didn't do the evangelistic campaign. So if before your evangelist campaign, you had 10 members in your church, you baptized five and only one stayed, hey, at least you got 11 now. And if you never did the campaign, you will still be stuck at 10. So thank God you're now at 11. Come on, somebody. All right. Uh, Next one. How do we convince pastors who don't believe in social media and digital evangelism Number one, show them this presentation. Number two, pray. Number three, let them know that this is where people are. Show them the statistics. Number four, talk to another pastor friend of theirs who is persuaded about digital evangelism and encourage them to persuade their colleagues. Sometimes pastors are more willing to listen to their fellow colleague pastors. So you've got to use wisdom in order to persuade them. That's the best that I can give you. And if you can't persuade them, you can be a digital evangelist by yourself. Okay, are there tools to assist in content creation? Great, there are simple tools. Write this one down. There's one tool called canva.com. Canva.com, that's C A N. I'm reaching hey, it on the chat, chat oh, box. Okay, perfect. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That's a tool that you can create flyers. It's easy, it's cheap, it's free, and, and, and even has someone. I saw some chat put AI artificial intelligence. It even has artificial intelligence to help you create the flyer. So we another question very fast. Let's go. Um uh, how can we get our members to be part of sharing a flyer online because our people here seem not to be interested in sharing our content? Yeah, the way you do so, that's why I said before, you need to build a team. Remember when I said that? Try and build a team. Even if it's four people, even if it's five people, say that this is going to be our social media team. And you've got to lead your team. And then once the, you have your team, because remember, you're not going to get everyone to come along. But start with a small team. And let that team be the team that's posting frequently and posting at the same time and posting with the calls to action in order to gain the commitments and encourage folks to go from clicks, clicks to crowd. The secret, start with a small team. Don't aim for everybody. Somebody is asking for the WhatsApp of Men Facilitator. So I think we will fix this one. Uh, another one, how... No, not that one. It's already there. How to use Metaverse for Adventist evangelism? I think that is what we have just <laughs> presented. And another one is asking in French, is the problem not rather 
due to our incapacity, our inability to exploit individual potentials of our members. Is asking a question if it's not the problem, not using the potentials of our members. Yeah, absolutely. So just like what you said, that's why the most important thing to do is to put out an interest. Hey, we're starting a new ministry. It's a social media team. And all you do is this. It says, who spends time on their phone? Who spends time on WhatsApp? You know, some people in church, they love posting every food they eat, every food they eat, every yam they eat. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You've seen every yam they eat. Every time they go to school, they're seeing it. So it says, who likes to post? Then those are your people that you recruit in order to get them going. And so the point that I want to make is that sometimes some people don't even know that they have the capability to be on a social media team. And so rephrase it in these different ways, be able to see that, wait, I do have the gift, the talent, and the passion for it. So rephrase it in order to... How can we follow up those who have committed to come, uh, whereas they're not in the territory where we are holding the campaigns? That's John Carlos. What if the person uh, whom we have called to, to act is not in our territory? Yes, remember, that's why I said it's very critical. That's what I said, that to be an effective digital evangelist, you've got to make sure, remember what I said, that you have local non-Adventists in your network. He works local, meaning that they live in that community, non-Adventists in your network. So they either got to be your friends, got to be, you know, somehow, some way you got to get their information. This is why as a church, maybe you need to do some felt needs event, do a soccer tournament, do, uh, or sorry, I apologize, football tournament, or do something, an event to bring people out. And when people come out, get their phone numbers, get their phone numbers, get their phone numbers. That way you can put them in your phones. And that way, when it's time to promote your evangelistic event, you actually have phone numbers from people in the local community. So if you have no phone numbers, I'm thinking WhatsApp, you see, I'm thinking in the African way. If you have no phone numbers, then find an event so that you can pull non Adventists out. When they come, get their phone numbers, put them in your phones, so that when it's time for the evangelism, then you can be able to reach out to them. How soon should you start your social media advertisement before you begin your evangelism? Right now. <laughs> exactly. Time is now. Someone is, must we share our advertisement to Adventist members or exclusively to a non-Adventist? Say that one more time for me, uh, Pastor. Should we share our advertisement to Adventist members or exclusively to non-Adventists? Well, remember what your goal is. Your goal is that you want to go from clicks to crowds. You want non-Adventists to come to your evangelistic campaign so that you can preach to them the three angels' message and encourage them to choose Jesus. So I'm not saying that Adventists, you know, you shouldn't share it with them, but the main people you should share it with is not Adventists because that's who you're targeting. If you're sharing it with an Adventist, then tell the Adventists to be tearing it with their non-Adventists. You know, because remember, we're not doing digital discipleship. We're doing digital evangelism. All right. The last question, because we are running out of time. Uh, Pastor, after you, you are called for the act of love, what systematic process do you go through to win them? Putting it in a different word, it's a one-off event. How do you win them that moment? Or oh, it's a constant and consistent process. Oh, great question. Great question. Okay. So, yeah, great question. I didn't actually clarify. So there's so many ways that you can do the compassion events. First, for me, I make it a part of the evangelistic meeting. So, for example, if I'm doing an evangelistic meeting for two weeks, if I have enough budget, if I have enough donations, then I'll do a compassion giveaway every single night that I had the meetings. Rice, maybe beans one day, maybe oil one day, something like that. So I'll do it every day of the meetings, you know, in order to encourage people to come on out. So that's one way that you can do it. I know another way that people, and hear me very carefully, and the way you do it is that you tell people that when you come, you will first hear the word preached. After you hear the word preached, you'll get your rice and beans. Because if you give them up beforehand, they might escape. Come on, somebody. The next thing is this as well. The next thing is that sometimes some way some people do is that they'll put their incentive at the beginning. They'll say the first day is where we're going to do a big giveaway. And then after the first day, you get a big crowd to come. 
And then they hear the word, they hear the music, they feel the love. Even though there's not going to be anything for the rest of the days, they were just so hooked by the word that they will keep on coming every single night. I've seen people do that too. Some people will say, look, we'll hold out the giveaways till the end of the week. So the people who come every single day, we're going to keep you working. You come every single day. And at the end, you'll be able to get this gift of, in addition to hearing the word of God. And so those are different ways that you can go about it. And remember, it's not manipulation. It's compassion. It's what Jesus did. Christ method alone. Thank you. We will take the last uh, question. Uh, the person who has raised their hand, Bell, can you just go very fast, please? Unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you very much. Good I'm blessed with this wonderful presentation. Um, yeah, when we add gifts to evangelism, it really attracts people to the place, and I'm a witness to that. But I have a concern. Um, what, when it comes to the targets, those we are targeting, it looks like when we introduce um, gifts, we are targeting those uh, who have low level income. And then when eventually we win, they are always expecting to receive. Mm. always expecting to be given and so when after some time they are not getting what they were they they, they got before they were won some of course fall back mm. uh, my concern is what kind of strategies can we develop to also attract those who are wealthy because someone who is living a comfortable life will not be interested in coming to um, a campaign site because of diapers or because of grocery and all that. So as we target the low level income people with these um, attractive packages, uh, we, we, we may have to also re-strategize or if a strategy already exists to be able to attract those who are on the higher level income uh, um, uh, group. Excellent. Thank you very much. Let me deal with that question. That's a very important question. So let me deal with uh, multiple parts to your question, and so let me address it. The first part to your question is um, people who come and they came only with the expectation to receive. Maybe they joined your church family and they kept having the expectation to receive. And because they didn't receive, they ended up falling off. OK, so I have a lot of experience with all of this. All right. So I'm going to talk really from my own experience at this point. The first thing is that this is very important. Um, because Jesus has told us something. Jesus has told us that the poor will always be among us. Our churches should be set up in order to be continually uh, capable of ministering to the people who are poor. The next thing too, um, or who are in need. The next thing is that this is why it's important that churches have networks of referrals so that maybe if there's something you can't do, uh, there are people you can be able to refer them to in order to be able to give assistance. And so the important thing I want to share, very good question, is that churches should have infrastructure beforehand in order to continually provide assistance. I'll give a perfect example. My own church has a food pantry, and that way we are capable of continually helping people who have needs. We have a clothing pantry, so we're helping people who continually have needs. And you don't need a lot of money to start these things. Clothes, you know, people are giving away clothes all the time. So we just take those clothes, we wash them and give them back out. Uh, food, uh, you know, same sort of thing. People are giving food all the time. Now, I understand this is not for everybody's context, but I'm just saying, for some churches who are capable, because there are some churches in the West Central African Division that are capable, you should set up the infrastructure so that you can be of continual assistance. And let me give you, this is Bible. This is Bible. Let me give it to you. In the early church, after they baptized, the Bible says they set up an infrastructure so that nobody had any need. Acts chapter six, the Bible says that there was a day distribution of food to the widows. You find out in different places of the Apostle Paul that they would collect offerings for the poor. And so you would see that even the early church, an infrastructure to continually help people with needs. You even have Dorcas, who was a person who was in a church providing for people's needs via clothes. So the first thing is that churches should set up infrastructure. The second, and I've noticed that this is one thing that's helped us. The second thing to your question, I apologize, that I have to, but I have to answer this question in depth because it's a very important question. So please give me a little time for this one. The second thing you have to also realize is that it will actually shock you. You may think that it's only the people who are poor who will come. But let me tell you something. We did this in Columbus, Columbus, Ohio. 
and we were giving out yams and sardines and food boxes. I'm telling you, doctors, <laughs> MDs, <laughs> MDs came <laughs> in order to get a fufu box. Does everyone hear me? All right. And so let me tell you something right now. We may think it's only the poor who are coming out for these things, but no, some people, it's not that it's not that they're not well off, but hey, any relief I can get, I'll take it. So we cannot only assume that it's going to be a low level income person that comes along. The next thing that we have to also keep in mind is expectation. And this is how I've dealt with it. I've also dealt with it where when a person wants to get baptized, I always do this. I always say, look, you're joining our church family. We want to help you and be here as much as you as possible. But we are not capable of helping out with a need every single time. And I want you to know that. Do you still want to be a part of our church family because you believe the truth? So I have this conversation. You need to have this conversation with people ahead of time. Because if you reframe their expectation, they don't have that expectation. Or they can choose not to join your church because, and then if they do, then hey, you know what? They were just coming for the fish and loaves. But I've had people who have come to my church who are like, Pastor, we understand. We're not coming for a handout. We want to be a part of this church family. And they are still there till this. So that's another way. Clarifications from the upfront. Here's the last thing. When folks come, I've dealt with so you know what you start to start to table we will train you and guide you how to start becoming self-reliant and self giving you what we are teaching you and i have done that with folks who don't know how to budget accordingly always behind we're always asking for assistance we them we didn't just give them we taught them how to. Fish. Now, I've asked that question in depth. Let me go into your second question. How do we attract the rich? How do we attract the wealthy? You know, the first thing I also want to say too is that, you know, we have to also be very careful of not trying to pick and choose the souls that God is trying to send to our church. And I, that was not the entire question, but I think it's important to realize that in Acts chapter 2, verse 47, it says, the Lord added daily to his church such were being saved. It's God who adds us who picks and chooses them. But the thing is that, you know, one thing I've learned about people, and I don't know, I don't know about Africa. I do know about here in the States. It's universal to all people, whether rich or poor, it's their kids. When you Advertise. We have a program for your kids, and we will see that way to attract the wealth. Do instead of telling them to come and get something, another way we've done is that we reversed it. We've said, "Look, if you have stuff to give, come and give it as well." And so we've also done that too. And other felt needs, maybe focusing on health. You see, we do health talks all the time, and rich people get sick. Rich people uh, 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 have 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 marriage problems and stuff like that. And so you can advertise that too. And so anyway, those are some additional strategies. I know I took a little longer on this question, but I think it did need some uh, 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 some clarification. And so uh, over back to you, Mr. Facilitator. Thank you. Thank you so for this. And, uh, we have a lot of questions, but we will not address them now. We are it's uh, time to conclude this program. Pastor Essien, your words of appreciation and your announcements, and then we will get the president uh, to say the final uh, remarks of this program, if it's possible. I see it's still connected. They're still connected. Pastor Siem, over there. Yes, um, thank you very much. Uh, I, I just received a message from one of our leaders. He says, this is uh, the best presentation. Indeed, uh, we have really enjoyed it, and um, it's very sweet. I, I, I am so happy. You, we brought you to facilitate this program. A quick announcement before I continue with the vote of thanks. Um, yes, the, we are having the African Youth Congress, and those of you who have registered, we believe that your preparation is in. We have sent uh, information out that those who are coming by air, by this month ending, we need your itinerary. If you really want Babcock University to pick you up at the airport at your own expense, then register with your conference youth leadership so that they can include you in that package. And then just in case you want to attend, but you couldn't register, 
There is a little window open for you from now up to the end of the month. If you want to join, but you couldn't register, even though we have closed registration, you can still see your conference union director. There is a little window uh, that you can register quickly so that we can be part of this uh, great event. So let's prepare. Then I also want to encourage all of you to pray for the Pan African Youth Congress. We are bringing young people from the continent, uh, about over 3,000 of them, and we will need your prayers to, um, for the program to be successful. Now, Pastor Kodo, we are so grateful. On behalf of the West Central Africa Division, I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to you for the enlightening and the engaging presentations. In fact, your insight and expertise have greatly enriched um, our knowledge and our, our understanding. <clears throat> we express our profound appreciation to our award officers for making time, even though they are in a journey, they, they try to join and they have stayed with us till the end. Your leadership, support, and encouragement have brought this seminar thus far. We also want to express our profound gratitude to all of you, our participants, our leaders from the union, from the conferences, pastors, youth leaders, the departmental leaders, for your active involvement and contributions, which have made this seminar a success. Your enthusiasm and engagement are highly appreciated. Thank you all for your time and dedication, and may God bless you. We hope to come to you again with another wonderful uh, event, another wonderful seminar. Thank you, uh, Pastor yeah. Kerry. Thank you, Pastor Essien. We appreciate, we are thankful to the Lord. Probably the flight going to Cameroon was delayed because of this program. Yes. And we're happy the president and the leadership of the division did not fly. So we will give time to the president for his closing remarks. But before he speaks, uh, we want to remind this house that we will have a powerful Adventist technology next year, February 2025, by the grace of God in Babcock University, yes. Nigeria. And our IT team will work towards that one. And we give the floor now to the president. We are happy that the, the plane is still grounded in uh, at Buanyi Airport. The Lord answered our prayers. Yeah. <laughs> you listening to yeah. you. Thank you very much, Elder Bakari. Hello, Ward. It's been wonderful. I have been blessed. I have been blessed. And I believe you have been blessed. Thank you, for your, Thank you very much for the well researched paper and engaging presentation that you did. We have been blessed and we have been challenged. Digital media is the way to go. Digital evangelism, that is the new way. We cannot succeed in this world without engaging in digital media when it comes to evangelism, when it comes to church programs. So I want to encourage all of us, what we have heard today, let us see how best we can practicalize them. Let us go back to YouTube, Go back to our Facebook page, look at it, listen attentively, and ask yourself, how can I make good use of this material? I believe we will be all, all of us will be blessed, and this presentation will help us improve and enhance our evangelistic efforts. I appreciate every one of you. Thank you, communication. Thank you, youth department, for bringing us together for this education. Thank you, personal ministries director. I pray that all of us will work together to move Word Impact 2025 forward. Remember, Word Impact 2025 has come to stay. You have a role. I have a role. Let us all join hands. Let us join hearts and do this for the Lord. Let us do it for the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for your presence. We wish you well. And we look forward to another engaging meeting like this. Thank you very much. God bless. Shalom. Man. Shalom, shalom. Thank you. <laughs> each one, I wanted to ask each one what? Each, each one, one, when one, each one, keep one, keep one. Each, each one, I, I will, will go. And I'm going. 
God bless. Thank you, sir. Thank Safety. you.